Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sitting down filming a really hard video. You know, my favorite thing to do on this channel. I honestly never pictured myself sitting down making this video today, but with it being a year later since things happened and people still asking on top of a lot of synchronicities popping up in my personal life recently, I figured why not also be really vulnerable about this aspect of my life too. Everyone talks about how hard breakups are to navigate and in my personal experience, friend breakups are 10 times harder. So let's talk about morning friend Ships because it's really not a comfy thing and I don't want to do it alone. <laughs> so to answer the long awaited question, I'm sure you guys have already guessed, no, me and Meg are no longer friends. And as much as I hate to feed you guys this generic line, it's the truth. Our paths no longer aligned and we followed accordingly. And outside of taking time to process and heal, I stalled on making this video because I wanted to make sure I was going about it correctly by being transparent with you guys while also respecting the relationship for what it was. I wanted to make sure I had no more lingering hurt feelings before sitting down and recording this video because at the end of the day, our friendship was a huge chapter for me. And I don't want how it ended to overshadow how beautiful the friendship was. I mean, she helped me in so many ways. She was right by my side during my introduction to adulthood and I'll forever be grateful for that. And again, I wanna clarify that this entire video is seen through my perspective of things. I'm not speaking for anyone. We haven't talked since, so I have no idea her feelings on things. And I think the best way to navigate this video is to be a super gay and do a song analysis because it's still hard to talk about and finding the words don't always just come naturally. So today's song will really help lead the conversation. So shout out to Now. Um, I don't even know if that's how you properly pronounce her name. It's N-A-O, Now. Either way. I love the bitch. She is a great singer-songwriter. And this song in particular has been resurfacing back in my life. It's been popping up a lot. So I really just felt called to sit down and make this video, whether it's closure for me, closure for you guys, because I know you guys were really invested in the friendship. But yeah, it was a song that was special to the both of us. We found it during our spiritual awakening, and there were just a lot of synchronicities with it. When we were really deep into dream work, we ended up dreaming the same exact verse from the song and saw the lyrics repeatedly everywhere we went. So we were hooked on trying to figure out why. Why is this song up in our face? But now looking back on it, I truly do think that the universe was just hinting at the end of a chapter. So with all of that being said, today's song is Bad Blood by, again, now, meow, meow. and it's about one of her friendships coming to an end that was really dear to her heart. So let's dive in. I have notes on my phone, so that's where I'm going to be reading from. The first lyrics say, you're a holiday, a glass of ocean slipping down my throat and landed on my hopes I'm dreaming, off the maps, no hidden grids, I'm fleeing. And I wrote, <laughs> I first think about all of our trips we had. It was what began our friendship. And on those trips, it felt like there was no barriers or grid to what we could converse about. Especially at the beginning of our friendship, we just had so much in common. A lot of our hopes and dreams were similar. And that was really exciting. She then says, I worship you like holy days. Lying on my back, seeing clouds and rays. Drinking lime and bitter from my lemonade. White horses, merry time won't do. So this is obviously hinting at very nostalgic moments for her. And I mean, it was no secret that me and Meg were joined at the hip. I very much looked up to Megan, asked for advice, had the highest respect for her. The next line says, do you remember? The holidays slipped away, time and place. And this line really resonated with me because I think when you go separate ways and you end up reminiscing, you do find yourself wondering if they're doing the same. Do they view happy memories different now? Not that it really matters, but that was just the process that I went through. It's just what came up and it is what it is. You just find yourself wondering how their thought process is going now that the relationship has come to an end. The next line says, I definitely remember lying on my back and seeing clouds and rays. We're dreaming. The feelings rule. Forever we're young. Pages unsung. A lot of our conversations revolved around what our lives were going to be, the future, and we were really young. We met when Gray was toddling around, so this verse just brings back nostalgia for me. The next lines say, I feel that you remember. Dreaming of a past that couldn't last, but now we're changing, refraining. I think it's the know that it's the, I think it's the bad blood, bad blood. 
and I promise you she says it so much better than what I'm saying right now. It's definitely a song that you have to hear, but I'll continue. I'm thinking it's the, no, what it's the, I'm thinking it's the bad, bad blood. And here it is, the reality. People change and that's good. That's what you want, but sometimes that means outgrowing the relationship with it. And I think both of us knew for a while what was happening as sad as what it is. And I can't speak for both parties, but I think a big part of it was the bad blood. And what I mean when I say that, it's all the conflicts, hard conversations, etc. Instead of bringing it to the table, I pushed it aside and unfortunately that doesn't make anything actually go away. It just builds and builds until it creates this bad blood that no one is addressing. And I just want to clarify by me saying this does not mean that I feel that I have bad blood currently with her. I just think that's what was accumulating while our relationship was still intact. The next lines say, oh, do you remember? The writing, the passion, the falling over, and tripping on ice, sharing advice, taking it twice. This really highlights the value of friendship. It's passionate. You're in the thick of it with each other and helping one another no matter how many times one falls. It's beautiful. But the next line is just as important for the contrast. She says, but let us not forget the silent days, stripped away, time and place. Oh, you choose not to remember. Fly away, counting days, I'm hiding from you. This showcases the balance of a relationship. With the good, there's also the bad. This part in particular stings because it just rings so true to how I dealt with conflict back then. Brushing things under the rug, literally hiding. If I felt any tension in the house, it was almost too overwhelming, so I would just leave and we would basically carry on after that, which is a great recipe for a failed friendship. And I take accountability for that. The next line say, I'm thinking it's the, no, that it's the bad blood. You guys get it. We, we already went over that one. But I will say if there's one piece of advice I can give you, if you truly value a relationship, tiptoeing over the hard parts might put a band-aid over the problem for now, but things build. Have the hard conversations. I choose for the rain not to fall, exposing the sun on you. I lose. And again, this just hints at how I used to handle situations. I felt like if I just kept it all inside that there would be no chaos. I didn't want the rain to fall exposing the sun on the friendship for it to then end, which is ironic because if anything, avoiding things is only pushing the relationship to end sooner. And I also want to clarify that that is not the only reason why our friendship has ended. There's things that I'm not going to bring to the internet. I'm not going to shed light on really private moments because again, I still have respect for the friendship that we did have. I just want to clarify that that was not the sole reason as to why we're no longer friends. I made plenty more mistakes than that, as did she. We're human. It is what it is. She then says, don't tell me I'm cuckoo. I know, and it's mad. We were close. Oh, I chose. And honestly, for this part, I'm just going to directly quote her because what she said, I think, will resonate with a lot of people. She said, I think we're all a bit crazy, aren't we? And the way you react to situations in the heat of the moment, when you look back on it, you think, I could have did that a bit better or handled it differently. But at the time, you just, you know, you just release whatever you're feeling at the moment. So that's probably why I'm like, don't tell me I'm cuckoo. I know. It's mad we were close. It was also about thinking about how close we were and how she should be by my side right now, here with me on this journey. It's crazy that she's not. 15 years ago, we were the closest, and now 15 years later, we're not. I just got chills reading that. Um, it sucks. Ending a friendship sucks because you do plan on a future together. She then says, my head's now afloat, but my heart's drowning pulse of you. I lose, which is a perfect description of where I'm at now. I'm feeling a lot better. My head is now afloat, but I still have days where I get in my feels about it. I don't know if that will ever end. So all I could really do is just be patient with myself and feel those feelings and remember that feelings are temporary. It too will pass. She then goes on to say, don't tell me I'm cuckoo. Kind of already analyzed all of these lyrics. So honestly, if I were to read this, it'd be really, really funny. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to read it for you guys for a little giggle because it's such a sad video. She says, don't tell me I'm cuckoo. Cuckoo, 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 ooh, ooh. I promise you guys, it just sounds so much better being sung out of her mouth. But yeah, that is it. I am closing this chapter of my life. I feel like I've said that a million times in this video, but that's what's happening. I'm sorry that I couldn't talk about it sooner. I really needed to give myself 
time to heal without any further questions. And with that being said, please, please, please do not go over to Megan's channel and bring this up more. I just feel like we're both trying to move forward from this. I do wish her and her kids the most abundance. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. No matter how we ended things, Megan, if you're watching this, as cringe as what this is, thank you. There's nothing more for me to say but thank you. My life path for sure got directed on the course that it was supposed to be on because of you and I'll just forever be grateful for that. And with all of that being said, that does conclude this video. I hope I answered most of your guys' questions. I don't plan on going any further into this topic and I'm sure you guys will understand why. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being on this crazy ride with me and supporting me throughout. I hope you're able to take something from this video, even if it's just closure. I definitely feel like I've gotten mine. So with that, I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.